everyone, my name is Eugenia. Thank you for joining me today. I recorded this video in Russian and I was requested to record the same message in English so it can be available to people here in the US. My channel is about reviewing articles about coronavirus, the information that I'm able to find through medical uh, circles and some resources and scientific research. So if you, if you are interested, please stay tuned. So let's start this article. It's posted on April 10, 2020. The coronavirus sneaks into the cells through a key receptor. Could targeting it lead to treatment? So, so far we obviously already know that um, virus enters through the upper respiratory tract and into the lungs as we breathe it in. It um, connects to the ACE2 angiotensin converting enzyme 2, receptor ACE2. Via that receptor, it enters the, into the cells, hijacks it, and continues to replicate its own RNA. It's very similar to the SARS-2003, therefore it's not really all that different, but later I'll show you why COVID-19 is a little bit more virulent. More and more information comes out about the effects of coronavirus on ACE2, how it enters the cells. This information's been available for a while, so I'm not gonna focus too much on that. And here we have an image, all the links gonna be below, where there's an airway epithelium. We can see the those little spiders, viruses. Uh, they hijack the cell, they enter in, they start replicating the RNA, and the T cells coming up this way to detect and kill the infected cells. However, there's new data available that, that suggests that a virus is able to attach itself to the T cells directly. South China Morning Post posted this, coronavirus could attack immune system like HIV by targeting protective cells, warned scientists. So those little spikes are the parts that connect to the receptors, right? So, so far we only knew about ACE2, but there is some more information about that. The coronavirus that causes COVID-19 could kill the powerful immune cells that are supposed to kill the virus instead, scientists have warned. The surprise discovery made by a team of researchers from Shanghai in New York coincided with frontline doctor's observation that COVID-19 could attack the human immune system and cause damage similar to that found in HIV. Lu Lu from the Fudan University in Shanghai and Zhang Chibo from the New York Blood Center joined the living virus, which is officially known as SARS-CoV-2, to a laboratory-grown T lymphocyte cells. T lymphocyte cells, also known as T cells, play a central role in identifying and eliminating alien invaders in the body. They do this by capturing cell infected with the virus, boring a hole in its membrane, and injecting toxic chemicals into the cell. These chemicals kill both virus and infected cell and tear them to pieces. To the surprise of the scientists, two cells became prey to coronavirus in their experiment. They found a unique structure in the virus's spike protein that apparently triggered the fusion of the viral envelope and cell membrane when they came into the contact. The virus genes that entered the T cell took it hostage, disabling its function of protecting humans. So those spikes can actually connect to T cells. The researchers did the same experiment with severe acute respiratory syndrome, or SARS, another coronavirus, and found that SARS did not have the ability to infect cells. So SARS, which killed hundreds in 2003 outbreak, can only infect cells carrying a specific receptor protein known as ACE2, and this protein has an extremely low presence in T cells. More and more people compared to HIV said the doctor who requested not to be named. Chen Yowen at the Institute of Immunology released a clinical report warning that the number of T cells could drop significantly in COVID-19 patients, especially when they were elderly or requested treatment in an intensive care unit. The lower the T cell count, the higher the risk of death. HIV does a similar process. It replicates in T cells and turns them into factors to generate more copies. 
new article came out in Cellular and Molecular Immunology Journal. SARS-CoV-2, in fact, still emphasized through its spike protein-mediated membrane fusion. It was published April 7th, 2020. And if we scroll down, we can see similar information. They compare COVID-19, SARS-2013, and control group, and their ability to infect to different receptors. Here we have ACE2. We see that both types of coronaviruses have ability to infect through ACE2, for the exception that COVID-19 is a little bit more infectious. But I'd like to pay attention specifically to these two uh, graphs. This is infection ability of MT2, and here infection ability of A3.01, where it's only coronavirus 2019 that's able to infect those cells, where SARS 2013 and control group obviously didn't have any. So that tells us that coronavirus, the latest version of it, is able to infect those two different types of lymphocytes and it stands out from any other virus. Under the bright light and fluorescence field, we can see that SARS-2003 was in the presence with um, two lymphocytes. There was no fusion noted. They just were present at the same time where here we can see them kind of group and fuse together. You can see the outlines of those fusions. The good news is that when virus joins with MT2 cell, right, this one right here, infection of MT2 cells by SARS-CoV-2 is abortive. So that tells us that even though they connect to the T lymphocyte, they are unable to replicate their own RNA. So that's a good news. So at least the number of the virus presence does not increase, but that also means that that T lymphocyte is going to be marked to be destroyed. So right about this illustration, we can see that it says here, right here, it is also possible that other receptors mediate the entry of SARS-CoV-2 into T cells such as CD147. It's present on the surface of T lymphocytes, which was recently reported to be a novel invasive route for SARS-CoV-2. So right here we can see a comparison between SARS-CoV-2 and HIV. It's a YouTube channel by Matt Cram. He does daily updates, um, so that's his information. But I really like his drawing. And what he compares here is two RNAs entering two, uh, through two receptors on membranes of two T lymphocytes. So very similar, but what's the difference? Like I mentioned, RNA enters through CD4 and starts replicating its RNA and becomes part of T cell. And that cell continues to live on versus in SARS-CoV-2, RNA enters through this receptor right here, CD147, into the T lymphocyte, unable to replicate, and the cell, both with the virus, are destroyed. So what is CD147? Let's look at that. So CD147 is also called Bacigen right here. It's on Wikipedia, available in many languages. Bacigen has also been shown to be an essential receptor in red blood cells of, for human malaria parasite Plasmodium. And that kind of rings a bell about the hydroxychloroquine, right? Another article, Bacigen opens the door for malaria. Here it says again that Plasmodium can cause malaria, a disease that is initiated by parasitic infection of erythrocytes. So now we see that CD147, here it is, is also present on erythrocytes. You can read the rest of the article, but basically we just know that this type of receptor that coronavirus is able to fuse with is uh, in both lymphocytes and erythrocytes. So that could kind of relate to that whole hemoglobin, red blood cells theory of coronavirus being blood disease. 
Also, this information from 2001, so it doesn't relate to coronavirus directly, but it tells us, in short, that in unavailability of CD147 led to mice develop an anemia. So that also goes hand in hand that it has a relation with erythrocytes and hemoglobin potentially. Another article, SARS-CoV-2 invades host, host cells via novel route, CD147 spike protein. And here it says that currently COVID-19 causes by severe acute respiratory syndrome. Here we reported a research finding that SARS-CoV-2 invaded host cells via novel route of CD147 spike protein. This spike protein binds to CD147 receptor on host cells, thereby mediating the viral invasion. Therefore, the discovery of the new route, CD147 spike protein for SARS-CoV-2 invading host cells provides a critical target for development of specific antiviral drugs. So I just wanted to share this information. This is my channel. I primarily post in Russian, my Russian channel, but the most important information I'll be recording in both languages. Please share if you think it might be helpful to others. I just think it might help doctors and scientists who are working to find a treatment for coronavirus. Anyway, thank you for your time. I hope you have a good day and see you next time. Bye-bye.